I'm Mia, and this is Ashley, and we're going to do some basic modified yoga because I have been doing computer work. As a lifeguard, we're doing in-service training and sometimes sitting still for long periods of time gets old really fast. I can last about an hour and then I have to stand up, go like this, and then I end up standing up. So I started doing chair yoga at the desk. I take a break like every 45 minutes to just do breathing and a little bit of movement right where you would feel stress. And this is good after a long commute home or if you're working from home and or some of my coworkers are at home with their kids and they're doing school and the children and the parents are um, looking for something, a little bit of a stress reliever. So it's a good break for you to do while you're doing your desk work. So this is desk work, chair yoga, modified. I had to modify it for myself last week because I injured my hand so I have limited range of movement in my hand. So some of the poses that I showed you last time when Ashley and I did it, I can't bear weight on the palm of my hand. So this is the chair yoga that I came up with. So first what we're gonna do is just work on inhaling and exhaling a break between inhaling and a longer exhale. So it goes a little bit like this. You're at your desk and you just Push away from the chair, push away from your desk. You can put your arms down at your side, either if you have one with arms or without, your arms are down at your side, and you inhale through the nose, exhale through your mouth. A longer exhale than inhale. So inhale, exhale, and you can count your inhales one, two, three, four, exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I do about three or four sets of inhale, exhale. You don't have to count, but just taking that break where you breathe in and exhale releases a lot of the stress that you might have. My stress shows up right where my skull connects to my neck, my cervical vertebrae, and also my lumbar. And then now, the older I get, my hips. And if you have any pre-existing injuries, a lot of the times, that's where stress shows up. If you have had back problems, knee problems, with your limited movement, if you, don't, if you can't get outside and move around because you're on this at-home, work-at-home, it's really hard, but sometimes you have to just stop and take a break and get your blood flowing, as they say, in oxygen. So inhale, exhale. And then the next movement we're gonna do is with our head. So we're gonna go from our head all the way down to our toes and back up again with our movements in the chair. So head is gonna start in neutral and we're gonna to start to inhale and tip our head all the way back. Inhale, in through the nose, exhale. Bring your chin back down towards your chest. And I want to do this four times. And now tip your ear from side to side, from shoulder to shoulder. So start neutral, inhale. Exhale, ear goes down to the shoulder. Exhale through your mouth, inhale. Pass neutral over to the right side. Exhale, inhale, neutral. Now, without inhaling or exhaling, start to rotate your head all the way around. You can look up, you can close your eyes. You can inhale and exhale however is most comfortable for you. So inhale, Exhale down and do these movements enough so that it starts to make a difference. In other words, you start to relax. 
So I'm going all the way, starting up towards the left, and now I'm gonna reverse. Once my head is at neutral position, I'm gonna reverse. So anytime you do a yoga movement, you go left first, right first, right first, left first, or front first, back first, however you start your movement, do the opposite either at the end of a set or right after the initial movement. So I can actually feel the muscle knots loosening as I do this. And I do it throughout the day. I don't just do it when I'm doing my desk work. I do it first thing in the morning when I'm waiting for my coffee to be made. By me, I make my own coffee. I don't stop for coffee. I do everything myself so I can make it exactly the way I want to. But I do it when I'm making coffee. I do it when I'm at a light. You rotate your head left to right to increase the blood flow to the area that's tense and that you're feeling these muscle knots. You can also palpate where your tension is. And I do that a lot too. I'll rock my head back and forth gently. You do it gently. You can use your fingers just to palpate where those muscle knots are. So we're going to go left to right, probably two or three times. You determine how many times you do it. If you only want to take a five minute break, then take a five minute break and do it. Okay. We've done the range of motion with the head back forward, just like if I were on the floor on my hands and knees and I'm doing the back stretch and back arch, inhale and exhaling, this can simulate it. If you sit up nice and tall and your shoulders are down and your shoulders are back above where your hips are, you're actually in the same alignment that you would be on the floor. You have a nice back of the chair right at your lumbar spine and it's creating a form of support. That's what you want to feel when you do yoga on the floor. You want to feel the floor being your support. That's your base. That's your grounding, stress relieving source is the back on the floor or the back on a chair. The breathing helps relax too. Once you start breathing, once you start moving, an extreme cardio workouts releases serotonin, but so does breathing and gentle movement. You don't necessarily have to do a cardio workout every single time you go out to work out. You can do a different type of workout. You can do gentle yoga, and you can just go for a walk. I mean, a 10-minute walk makes a huge difference. Okay, so we've done our head. Now we're gonna do a forward bend. So if you can scoot to the front of your seat, just for ease of movement. So we're gonna bring our hands up, scoot your knees down a little bit. So put your feet in front of you. So you're gonna do just like we did with the sun salutation where you bring your arms up, inhale. Look up skyward and then down as you exhale. Do this four times. Now your arms are gonna go from your sides and you're gonna put your palms out to face skyward. So you're gonna come up. As you come up, you're gonna inhale. Your palms go up to the ceiling like this. And once you reach the height of where you can reach, go a little bit higher. Exhale, and then come all the way down. Your hands come all the way down to the floor. And then inhale back up. Exhale, increase your stretch a little bit more, and then we're gonna go back down. Forward bend. Inhale, increase your stretch a little bit more. Bring your arms down to a T pose like this. Now we're gonna do a little bit of up and down from here. Palms up, palms down, exhale. Palms up. Palms down, exhale. Bring your arms down at your side. Now I want you to try and work on the twist. We did the twist on the floor with one knee up. We don't even have to do that. 
All we want to do is the gentle side of this. Plus, if we start moving around at our desk and in our chair, somebody might think that we're, you know, doing something that we're not supposed to be doing. All we're doing is stretching, right? So we're going to start to turn to the right. Reach your arm behind you, as far behind as you can. If you can only get to this point and turn, that's fine. I can stretch all the way back here, look over my right shoulder, exhale, and come around. Walk your arms, walk your hands around. And exhale, come back around one more time. We're just gently twisting, we're doing the twist. And then come back to neutral. And a couple of different things you can do. You can bring your leg up. You can stretch forward with your leg bent on your um, right leg, bent on left knee. And you can gently bend forward and that stretches your glutes. That's a good glute stretch. Not everyone can do it. It does feel good. I love it. But not everyone can do that because of pre-existing knee problems, joint issues. You have to be very careful. Don't make sudden movements without warming up completely. So we've warmed up our head, our neck, our arms. We've got enough breath in us that hopefully our body is warmed up and we can get out of the chair. So step up out of the chair and just start doing a little bit of march walking just to warm your body up. And then we're going to do... The twist that we did in the chair safely with the arms twisting us in the chair, yep, just ground your feet and you're going to, yes, yeah, see, Ashley remembered that movement from before. She's been practicing, haven't you? I have. She has. <laughs> She's been practicing. So you can look the way that you're turning, turn with your head, your head leads and your body follows and that goes with a lot of different modalities of fitness. That's walking, it's running, and it's biking. Okay, that's our twist. Now, we're gonna do a little stuff in the chair so that I'm turning my chair. I wouldn't expect you to turn your chair if it's a heavy chair. I'm just turning so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so pretend you're at home now and you're not at your workstation. You're at home and you want a little bit, three minutes of a little bit of a workout. So <clears throat> I'm going to teach you how to do a deadlift. When I used to do senior fitness, I used to teach the seniors form follows function. Functional exercise keeps you fit and this is a good exercise. You want to do it with your knees slightly bent and your feet hip width apart. And so you have your chair and that's where you pick up your item. It can be a light item. It doesn't even have to be heavy. It can be a pillow, just for something for your body to know it's picking up. And the actual movement, this is called a deadlift. You don't have to pick up a 100 pound item or even a can of peas, you can if you want to. I just start with a pillow or a little ball. And all you're gonna do is start from a standing position, shoulders are down if they're aligned with your hips and your ankles. And you're going to keep your head neutral, no sudden movement, slightly bend your knees as you do the forward bend. You're going to reach your arms out, you're going to grab your item, you're going to straighten out your posture, and you're going to pretend to put the item up on the shelf. And you're going to do this movement, practicing your functional movement so that the day you're putting stuff away in the cupboard or you're putting towels up in the closet, you don't make any sudden movements. You don't want to reach around and pick something up. Think about what you do before you do it so that you don't have any accidents or injuries like I've incurred. It takes a lot longer to heal once you've reached a certain age. So here we are doing our deadlift. And this is good um, exercise for you, bending at the hips, keeping your hips actually um, flexed and straightening, straightening them, keeping them open and, and flexed 
increases mobility and flexibility. So this is like the forward bend that we do in sun salutation, but I can't get down on the floor right now because my hands hurt. So this is a good exercise. The next is I'm gonna turn my chair around and what I'm gonna do is hold on to my chair, even though I don't need to, I'm doing it for exercise purposes, we're going to do just a simple tree pose. And I we demonstrated it before, but with the chair yoga, you can do it. You're gonna take, hold on to the chair with your right hand, right foot comes up off of the floor just a little bit, and it rests on the inside of the left. And you're gonna take your arm out. This creates imbalance, but you have the chair to hold on to. Bring your arm up, inhale. Exhale down, back towards your side, bring it out to your side again, and then start to slide your foot up above your ankle. Your hip angle is open, your chest is facing forward, just like your face is facing forward. You move with your body like this, and yeah, you can do range of motion. You can open and close, open and close. And with this range of motion, you can keep your balance and also do the, do the tree pose. That's the grounding pose. You can do the opposite side after that. Left hand, left foot comes up, arms are open. Circles. This is really good. I have limited range of motion in my shoulder from years of swimming, but that's okay. That's why I swim, but I'm not in the pool today because I hurt myself. So that's the tree pose. The next thing we're gonna do is a forward bend next to the chair. If you need the chair to do your forward bend, that's okay. Run your hand down on to the armrest and just dangle forward. I don't need it, so I'm gonna move actually away from the chair and I'm gonna do my forward bend with my face in between my calves. My knees can be slightly bent, that helps Soften your lumbar spine. And the blood rushes to your head. And if you feel like you're unstable, you can grab the chair. You can start with one of the, these forward bends, just holding onto the chair. You don't have to go extreme. You can always modify the yoga. So that's the forward bend. The forward bend in sun salutation is inhale, exhale down, forward bend, and then come back up, rolling your spine all the way up until it's straight. Shoulders, again, are down, chest is forward, and head is forward. So the next thing I'm gonna do, since we did the forward bend, and we're opening a little bit more blood flow in our lower extremities, we're gonna do something called a one-legged deadlift. This is the deadlift where we're picking something up that I showed you, and then there's the one-legged one, which can, here, I'll move over your side, which it can get a little bit tricky, but that's all right. We've got the chair for support. So you're just gonna step forward a little bit on your left leg, holding onto the chair with your left hand, right? Your knee is gonna start to bend as your right leg comes off of the floor, and you're just gonna, good, Ashley, reach forward. You don't have to go any lower than that. Come back up. This knee can bend as it straightens out behind you. This knee is bent a little bit. Your face is in a neutral position. This is an excellent balancing, strengthening technique that you can do for your core. You don't have to go on the floor and do crunches. You can do this. I can do it without the chair. As an example, I can do it breathing in, inhale, exhale, down to the floor. I can do it with the chair. I can do half of it with the chair. I can hold on with my right and still bend my right and the left leg is straightening behind me. I can do it with the security of the chair or without the chair, that's good. That's an excellent core strengthening, balancing. This is confusing the body. This is what they mean by muscle confusion, you know. So that's the deadlift. The next one, we can do squats. If your knees are okay, you can stand behind a chair 
You can do plie squats like this. I like these for yoga, the plie squat, or you can just do the standard squat where you just close your hip angle. Your hip angle is closed, but you're bearing weight onto your quads, okay, and your glutes. And so you want your knees forward, following the form of your feet. So your feet are forward, just like they're on water skis <clears throat> or snow skis. Your knees start to bend as your hip angle closes. Your back is straight, your chest is forward, and your shoulders are down. So you can squat like this if your body allows it, or you can just close your hip angle like this and do a slight modified squat. <clears throat> you have powerful legs, and they can handle your weight if you do it wisely. You can do it in a chair and work your way up. You can do it without the chair. You can do it with weights. You can do a deep squat. You can do a narrower squat, or you can just do the deadlift. But that's a good workout. It's a weight bearing, it's functional movement. Because once you stop walking and you're sitting around a lot, we know what happens after that. So the next pose I'm gonna do is the warrior pose. And I can do it with or without the chair. Sorry. With or without the chair. And all it is is like the deadlift. And I would normally do it on this side, but I'm gonna show you on this side. So you're gonna hold on to the chair, the chair is your base, you're gonna step forward with your left foot forward. Your right leg steps away a little bit and you angle it out so it can bear the weight of your back leg. That's it, that's all it is. You can make it extreme like this, but you don't have to. It's just a little bit of a lunge. My knee is bent just a little bit. The next thing, you inhale, Arms come up, and then they come down to our T-pose that we did before. You increase the lunge just a little bit. Your knee does not go over your foot. So give yourself credit, do it slowly. You can hang on to the chair when you do this too. You can step back behind the chair, step forward, you're holding onto the chair. You only need one arm to do the warrior pose. Look at this, I'm doing the warrior pose. You can come over here and modify it, step forward, with your lunge and the warrior pose comes like this. You can hold on to the chair. But the warrior pose is a good weight bearing exercise to do. And then just real quickly, um, you can do downward facing dog in, in the chair in order to stretch your calf muscles. I did it last week, I started here. And within reason, your chair cannot slide. So as long as it's not gonna move, Downward facing dog goes like this. Your hands are in the chair like this. If you can go down deeper in the stretch, your elbows can come down into the chair. And remember the downward facing dog is up on the toes, down in the heels. And I can now put pressure on my hand because the seat is soft. So this is our downward facing dog. And you can come up out of it as long as your hips come up to the ceiling. Inhale, exhale. You can step forward for your lunge, stretching out your um, hamstring. Come forward, change the lunge. And then, since you stretch out your hamstring, and you can go as deep as you want. Ashley went deeper than I did because I'm still recovering. You can do just a real quick quad stretch like this. If you cannot get your foot back here in order to stretch, then don't do that stretch. That stretch isn't completely necessary. But since I do the hamstring, I like to do the quad stretch. So that's it. I did eight poses that took 30 minutes. We can break it down and just do, if you remember just to breathe and do your head and do your head like this and look forward and look back and do your twist, that's five minutes. So I hope you guys are staying safe and sane with all the stress that's going on, and we'll do some other stuff, right, Ashley? Yeah. See, she's promising to come. I bought a yoga mat. So oh, she bought a yoga mat! Yay! And we can do yoga here, too. At some point in time, I hope that we can all get together and do yoga. So thank you. Thanks, Erin, for coming. Thank you.